Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head over to the motherland of Scotland once again, and we're also going to visit my home county of Clipmanninshire in central Scotland. And for this review, we are returning to a brewery that is featured on the channel a good number of times before. I've had many nice beers from these guys over the years. I would say that this brewery are one of the older and more established craft breweries in Scotland. They kind of straddle the line between the more traditional style of brewing and the more modern American side of things. Most of the beers that I've had from these guys over the years have been things like, you know, golden ales, uh, pale ales and laggers and stuff like this although there are one or two more malty beers available from this brewery as well it's one of those that we're going to have a look at today this is a style that I've never tried from this brewery before and if memory serves me correctly this particular beer is one that I've never seen from this brewery despite having been around many beer shops in Scotland some of which or one of which in particular is owned by this brewery. So yeah, this beer was a little bit of an unusual find through Sistembo Lagget here in Sweden, but when I saw it, I knew I had to review it. So um, yeah, for this one then, like I say, we are going to go to Clipmanninshire in central Scotland. We're going to go to Alloa, which is the old brewing capital, just a mile or two down the road from my parents' house, and we're having a look at another beer from Williams Brothers Brewing Company. So this particular beer is called Black. It comes in at 4.6% ABV, and this one is an English mild. So yeah, a little bit of an unusual style in Scotland. You don't find too many of these. In fact, the only other ones that I can think of offhand were ones that came through um, that came through Brewdog. I think it was How to Disappear Completely was an English mild and I can't think of any other ones offhand that I've had. But this beer was released here in Sweden as part of the Tilferig Temporary Sortiment on the 25th of May 2021. And this is the first Williams Brothers beer that I've seen through System Bolaget in maybe two or three years. I know that a few years ago they released Joker and uh, Caesar Augustus, but uh, those were withdrawn, I think, after three or four months, something like that. But uh, yeah, like I say, this brewery are known for historic recipes and also for their um, for their kind of session beers and stuff like that. My favourite beers from this brewery would probably be the Freya Heather Ale, which is beautiful on tap if you can find it, um, Caesar Augustus, which is the Lager IPA hybrid. Um, I always enjoyed Pavlov's Dog and Paradigm Shift, which are the more kind of red malty beers. I always really like those. And then uh, the March of the Penguins, which is their stout. That's a lovely beer too. Joker is a very popular one, although I prefer the ones that I've just mentioned. But um, yeah, this was a really unusual find through System Bolaget. But fingers crossed it's another good beer. Always nice to review different styles of beer from breweries that you know. And it was pretty cool to find another Scottish beer uh, coming through uh, System Bolaget, of course. So yeah, let's crack on with this review then. I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this one. So as always with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done it from Williams Brothers Brewing Company before, and you will no doubt see more added to that list in the near future. But there's all the usual social media down there. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, province, prefecture, or whatever it is you happen to be interested in. Do check out the playlists of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Scottish beers that I've reviewed for you that's being added to whenever I get the opportunity. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Williams Brothers Brewing Company then, on to my brewery notes. So the company that eventually became Williams Brothers Brewing Company started off as the family-owned Glen Brew home brewing shop through in Glasgow, which was uh, started back in the early 1980s, if memory serves correctly. Um, but the first beer that these guys released was inspired by a 17th century Gaelic recipe for Freya Heather Ale, which is, of course, named after the Celtic mythological hero of the same name. But in 1988, a woman of Gaelic descent came into the brew shop with a translation of this recipe that she'd made into English, and she basically wanted to brew a batch of this beer to share with her family and she agreed to share it with Bruce Williams in exchange for a help brewing uh, for help brewing a batch of the beer and I think there was a kind of informal arrangement where this woman and her family basically get as much of the Freyak Heather Ale as they won, uh, because this was the beer that really set things in motion for them but they produced a batch of five barrels of this beer at Tainu Railway Station near Oban out on the west coast of Scotland and uh, the, the following year word of mouth had meant, uh, meant had 
basically seen to the fact that this beer had uh, increasing demand. So yeah, that was it. So at this point in 1989, Scott Williams joined his brother Bruce and they began to develop other historic recipes such as the Grotsit, which is a gooseberry wheat ale, the Kelpie, which is a seaweed ale, Abelum, which is the elderberry black ale, and also the Alba, which is the Scots pine ale. So I think it's only the Alba that I've reviewed out of that list, so I need to see about reviewing the other ones. At, uh, at some point in the future. Um, but the official start date of Williams Brothers Brewing Company is listed as 1992, and those four recipes that I've just mentioned to you were produced originally at the McClay Brewery in Alloa and then at the Craig Mill Brewery in Strathaven, which was actually built by the Williams Brothers Company um, and then they produced those beers there from 1998 until 2004, at which point this brewery was taken over by Strathaven. Uh, ales of course. But in 2004 the company relocated to their current base at the fourth brewery in Kelly Bank in Alloa and this was when they adopted the name Williams Brothers uh, officially if you like. Um, but oddly enough these guys are the last brewery operating in the old brewing capital of Scotland and over the years they've built up the capacity of this brewery to 100,000 hectolitres and they've got plans to build a new brewery just next to the current site which will have a, have a capacity of 200,000 hectolitres. But these days the brewery is run by Chris Williams who is Bruce's son but Scott is still involved in the running of the company as well. So it's kind of like the Williams Brothers and Son Brewery, I guess you could say now. But um, yeah, like I said to you, these guys, very well known for their historic recipes. They've produced somewhere in the region of 60 different beers, according to Untapped, as of May 2021, when I'm filming this review for you. And like I say, um, most of their beers are kind of like golden ales, pale ales, IPAs and things like that. In recent times, they've released a series called the Totemic Tall Boys, which are a little bit more like um you know bigger bolder american style craft beers and i've reviewed i think all of those on the channel so far actually those were the last reviews that i did from williams brothers brewing in fact so yeah you can check all of those out if you type in williams brothers on the uh, the channel homepage. but yeah that's all i can really tell you about williams brothers brewing company for the moment and um, i actually contacted williams brothers brewing to do a meet the brewery segment with these guys so hopefully the next time i'm home in say um you know which will likely be you know september and october we'll see if we can do a meet the brewery segment with uh, with williams brothers and hopefully we can get the three guys in the in the country scott bruce and chris that would be really cool if we could do an interview with all three of them but we'll need to see how that works out with the covid restrictions and uh, all of these things we might have to delay it again to a, to a later trip of course but yeah as i say that's all i can really tell you about Williams Brothers Brewing Company for the moment, one of the more, uh, old, one of the older and more established craft breweries in Scotland, of course. But if you want to learn more about these guys, you can check out the brewery website. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And you can, of course, check out the Rate Beer, Untapped, and Beer Advocate pages to learn more about all the different beers that these guys have done. As I said, pardon me, Alloa, where these guys are from, is the old brewing capital of Scotland, home to Maclay's Brewery for uh, for many many years. And uh, Clamanninshire County actually has many, many whiskey bonds. So there's a lot of whiskey that is aged in, uh, in Clamanninshire, which is pretty cool. So, um, yeah, there's another very well-established brewery in the county as well called Harveston Brewery, who you might have heard of. So we've got two very historic breweries uh, in my home county, which is great. But, yeah, let's crack on then and have a look at this beer itself. I have to say I'm very curious about this. So it's a half-litre bottle. I think I paid... Um, about 30 Swedish kroner for this one, which translates to roughly about um, £2, 30 Swedish kroner is probably about £2.50, something like that. In the Scottish supermarkets, you'll probably pay about £1.75 or something like that for this, maybe £2. So, you know, actually quite similar price-wise when you think of it. So, yeah, 30 Swedish kroner translates to, yeah, roughly about £2.50, something like that. And when you consider the fact that this is an import beer, that's really not bad. To be quite honest, especially with the whole Brexit stuff that's going on. But for those of you watching in other places, um, that would translate to roughly, you know, about three dollars, uh, you know, three dollars, three dollars fifty American. But yeah, half liter bottle. This one there, you can see the bottle cap there, which is quite standard for Williams Brothers these days. And you can see the Williams Brothers Brewing Company symbol there, an old Celtic symbol. But it tells you on the back here, Williams Black. Uh, Williams Black is a multiple award-winning British-style mild ale, pouring a black brown with aromas of coffee, licorice, roast and chocolate malts and a sweet uh, hoppy mouthfeel. So um, yeah, quite nice. I do see as well, I didn't notice that, they've put a sticker over this to say it's 4.5%. So I wonder if they've changed the recipe of this very, very slightly so that it's 4.5% um, because you know, system will I get have um, 
some strange rules and things like this. But um, yeah, I noticed that it's stickered over that it's 4.6%, but there you can see they've got their own bottles and things like that. So they've got a, a supplier of bottles for things, but they're newer, more craft beers tend to be in uh, in cans and stuff like this. But um, the malt base in this one, I took this off the website, it's hopped with it's um, it's hopped with Magnum and Cascade, and then it's got a malt base of pale, crystal, roasted and chocolate malts with some wheat and oats in it as well. So maybe a little bit more of a modern take on the English mild in fact. But yeah, let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting. Two other interesting points about this um, this company is that they own the shop Valhalla's Goat um, at Kelvin Bridge in Glasgow, which I would really, really recommend you go and visit if you find yourself in the motherland. And um, they have a bar right next to that called In Deep, which is also worth checking out. But these guys also own uh, co-own Drygate Brewing Company with Tenants, who are one of the big macro producers in Scotland. Williams Brothers are involved in that as well. And I would say that that's definitely worth um, checking out again if you find yourself in Glasgow. There's quite a few good places through there these days. But um, yeah, let's have a little look at this one then. So as you can see, this beer has poured a lovely dark. This it's almost the same. It's, it's a lovely, very very dark, um, sort of almost ebony, chestnutty. Oh, no, chestnut's not right for this. This is a lot darker than I expected it was going to be. But then when it's got a name like black, you know. That's maybe a bit of a silly thing to say, but you can see when we poured this beer anyway, just before the head disappears, you can see that when we poured it, it had about a quarter or a third finger of a frothy, I would say kind of fawn coloured head. That's faded away to just be a very thin kind of foamy layer, but it's left a nice ring just around the edge of the glass. But there's one or two big bubbles um, sticking towards the side of the glass. There are a few little ones going up towards the bottom of the head there, but I mean, overall, it does look um, pretty nice. So, um, yeah, in terms of the colour, though, it's like a very, very dark sort of stained mahogany type colour, this beer. Um, I'm not sure how well you guys can see it, but if you put the light through this, it's actually got a really lovely kind of ruby, very, very dark ruby colour to it, this one. So remember, when it comes to the colour of your beers, it depends on, one, the type of malts that you use. That determines the magnitude of the colour of the beer for the most part. And then, two, the length of your wort boil adjuncts and uh, barrel aging, of course, can affect the colour too. But I think in this case, it's really only the first two variables that we mentioned. That are in play here but uh, yeah I think a nail like this I don't know what their boil time would be but essentially the longer you boil the wort the more the sugars caramelize thus you get a darker color of beer but as I say the magnitude of the color is determined by what kind of malts that you use but in terms of the mild ale this is definitely the mild ale style this is definitely one of the darker ones that I've come across I've had a few mild um, in recent times like I say I think the very first one I reviewed was called How to Disappear Completely from Brew Dog and they do a bit of everything. Um, recently I had one from um, either Urubro Breughus or uh, Nina Sum's own brewery here in Sweden who they love to brew the German and English styles of beer of course. So yeah I don't get too many English miles on the channel so I think that's something that I need to look into a little bit the next time I go maybe ask the English guys about um, some good mild beers but uh, yeah as far as I can see this is definitely one of the darker ones that I've come across uh, but I've only reviewed you know, five or six mild ales over the years but yeah certainly an interesting looking beer this one let's take a closer look at the aroma and just see how we get on with it then oh yeah um, it smells very nice actually so I've said in the review that the other review that I did recently um, of the the mild from, uh, from I think I want to say it's from Nunes Hans um, but the English mild ale that they had it actually kind of felt this is almost like the, the, the English equivalent of like a German Dunkel almost um, and with this one you kind of get that sort of vibe again it's very very similar of course the German Dunkel is a lager beer so bottom fermentation low temperature fermentation this beer is an ale so higher temperature fermentation uh, top fermenting yeast um, but yeah it smells very very nice so um, the backbone of this beer um, uh, the backbone that you get out of this beer it's got a nice roasty toasty kind of bread crust to it you definitely get a nice big sort of brown almost like rye bread out of the beer and um, there's one or two little woody notes to it um, maybe one or two very slightly kind of nutty things as well but yeah backbone roasty toasty bread crust Big kind of brown bready notes, almost rye bready notes. Um, woody, nutty, 
quite a bit of a toasty brown sugar there. You don't get too much of an oily brown sugar out of this one. But yeah, a um, wee bit of a toasty, well-fired kind of uh, brown sugar coming out of the beer. Um, is there any more to the malt base than that? Um, I have to say I don't get, they were talking about licorice in this one. I don't really get licorice out of this beer. For me, it's a more kind of bready, bread crusty, toasty, toasty caramelly type thing. Um, so that's what I really get. That's what I really get out of this beer. Um, so yeah, I think that this one is, uh, it, it really, it, it's, a, it's quite different actually from the other uh, Williams Brothers beers that I've had before. One of the things is with this brewery, um, the beers have got a very distinctive aroma. Like if, if, if you gave me one of the, uh, uh, just a random Williams Brothers beer from the golden side of things, I could tell you straight away that it was one of their beers. This one is a little bit different, but at the same time, you do get a little bit of graininess in the, uh, in the malt base. Um, with this beer, which is kind of um, which is kind of interesting, they do love a little bit of crystal and a bit of Maris Otter malt. I think it's well, is it? Yeah, they seem to. From what I remember, they like a little bit of Maris Otter and a little bit of crystal in their uh, in their beers, and you know you can kind of you can smell a little bit of the kind of um, it gives you a little bit of the graininess and a wee bit of the the kind of brown sugary notes there because you do the more that you smell of this beer, it sort of mellows out a little bit, and you get um, you know you get a little bit of the woodiness coming out of it but you also get just a wee touch of that kind of biscuity McVitie's digestive biscuity quality coming out of this beer so yeah I really like how this one um, I really like how it goes about its business in uh, in that regard this beer so um, yeah the malty side of this one comes across really comes across really nicely and that's you know what you would expect from um, from uh, from an English mild, you do expect it to be a little bit more of a kind of malty leaning ale. But um, in terms of the hoppy side of things, um, in terms of the hoppy side of the beer, then I don't think there's anything more we really need to say about the malty side. But in terms of the hoppy side of the beer, you get a little bit of earthiness coming out of this one. There's a wee touch of a herbal quality in there. I do wonder if it's kind of um, if it's all if all, both of the hops in this are American cultivated. Cascade, of course, is an American hop, and Magnum. I think can be from Germany. I think you can get German Magnum and I think you can get Magnum from other places too. So it does give you a little bit of that kind of German smoothness almost, a bit of a soft earthiness, a little bit of herbal quality. We touch a floral character to it as well and a little bit of a kind of more grassy note uh, also on the nose there too. But um, I think that the green component for me overall, I would say that it's quite smooth rather than anything else. But on the fruity side of the beer, it's quite, you know, it's you know pretty much soft red fruits there. There's um, a little bit of a kind of soft figgy quality to this one, a little bit of a black currant. Um, you know, you'll maybe get a little bit more of a kind of oily um, blackberry off of this one too. But the fruits come across as quite kind of, um, they come across as a little bit kind of light and juicy like figs and and uh, a little bit of a black currant -y sort of thing to um, to this one, which isn't unusual for this style. Usually we'd, you would expect a little bit of a softer red fruity character from this style as well but like I say the more uh, the more English milds that I come across they really just remind me a little bit like an ale ver they remind me of an ale version of a German Dunkel or a Czech Czerny type beer so um, yeah take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma of this one I think this is going to be interesting to try a style that you don't find all that often uh, in Scotland of course so yeah this one is the black an English mild ale 4.6% ABV or 4.5 I'm not sure because it's got that little sticky on label on it. But this one is from Williams Brothers in Alloa in my home county of Cotmanninshire in the motherland of Scotland. Let's get stuck into this one. Slanger Skull, cheers. Well, first impressions. Certainly sticks to the Williams Brothers sessionability type, uh, type thing. Very, very easy drinking beer, this one. Um, but yeah, quite different from the other things that I've had from them before, definitely. But, um, I mean, overall, it is quite a nice beer, this one. Um, the, far, the one thing I would say about it is that it's definitely one of the more kind of roasty, toasty ones that I've had from them over the years. Potentially the most roasty toasty one. Um, the other beers that I would have had from these guys, it would have been the Profanity Stout, which I can't remember, I don't know if they do that anymore. 
but also the March of the Penguins. There is another stout as well, actually, if memory serves me correctly. Um, I don't know if these guys do a porter, um, but yeah, this is this definitely is one of the more roasty, toasty um, beers that I've had from uh, from Williams Brothers. But it still maintains that kind of smoothness and drinkability that is the trademark of this brewery, in my experience. I think I've reviewed about, I must have reviewed about 15 or 20 beers from this brewery at this point. Something like that. Um, but yeah, it gets a thumbs up from me, this one. Something a bit different. And as I say, I like trying different styles from breweries that I, I know quite well, actually. And being one of my local breweries, you know, it's um, kind of makes sense that I've tried a lot of beers from these guys. Um, yeah. So, what can we say about this? Um, let's just break down the flavour then and see how we go. It's definitely one of the more kind of grainy, um, sort of toasty miles, I think, that I've come across at least. But remember, I'm not so experienced with this style. But straight away, we'll focus on the middle third of your palate first. And straight away, the backbone of this beer is a nice toasty bread crust. It's not overly dry, but when you've got roasted barley in this one, it does give you a little bit of that toasty, kind of well-fired, morning roll, bread crusty sort of thing. Sitting on top of that, you get a layer of a kind of thicker brown bread. Um, in the flavour, it's a little bit more like a kind of wholemeal bread, but in the um, aroma, it came across as being a little bit more kind of like a rye bread in a sense, although it doesn't quite have the sweetness of a rye bread. I always miss the rye breads from when I lived in Germany. But yeah, nice toasty, um, toasty, well-fired bread, crusty backbone to it, brown bread sitting on top. And I think that... Um, I think that goes together very, very well in this one. Um, so, yeah, um, it goes together. Um, it goes together very, very nicely in that sense. Um, but yeah, what you'll notice is that on the front half of that middle third of your tongue, you start to get one or two little nutty elements out of it. If you go to the dead centre of your tongue and just follow that forward, you will get a few nutty elements in there. But there's also a very slight woodiness um, in the undertones of this beer as well. But sitting on top of the brown bready layer, in the dead centre of your palate, you do get a bit of a, a very, you get like a little circle and there's a bit of sweet kind of caramel in there. It's got a little bit of an oily character to it, so maybe this beer has had a slightly longer boil than some of the other Williams Brothers ones. Remember, when you boil the wort longer, you get more sugar caramelisation. You can definitely get a wee bit of that out of this one. Um, but as you move out from the centre of that, you start to get a little bit of a sweeter caramel in there, and then there's a little bit more of a kind of toasty brown sugary note as you move towards the... Um, the edge of the palate but overall the middle third of your palate in this one I think is quite um I would say it's quite um it's quite crisp actually in a sense it's quite a kind of condensed and crisp flavour that you get out of this one but I think that covers the middle third of your palate. If you go to the back third of your palate then on the border region between middle third and back third you get a little bit of a bready build up and a bit of a toasty Bread crusty note in there again, and as you move into the back third of your palate, you can feel there's a wee bit of a well fired bread crusty um, element in there too. So I like that about this beer. Um, I do like that it's got a wee bit of that kind of contrast there. So you get a wee bit more, it feels on the back third of your palate as if it's leaning a bit more towards that toasty, grainy side of things. Sitting on top of that though, you get a bit of the yeastiness, so you can feel the flavour is a little bit taller, and as you kind of come forward from that. I wouldn't say that the back third of your palate, the flavour is too sort of tall and airy in a sense, but if you start from the back of your palate, you can feel it just, the flavour just starts to condense down, and then when you go into the middle third of your palate, the flavours are quite, you know, I don't know if squashed together is the right way to describe it, but yeah, the flavours kind of are a little bit more condensed together as you push forward into the uh, the middle third of your palate there. But yeah, I think that covers the um, malty yeah, and yeasty side of the beer, if you like. Um, it's one of the more toasty and uh, kind of grainy milds I think you're going to come across. But as I say, I don't have too many points of reference for this style. Not overly experienced with it. But on the hoppy side of things, let's have a wee look at that then. Um, you know, this one, as we said, uses a German hop. What I think is a German hop, of course, with Magnum and Cascade, which is more American. But um, yeah, it still does give you a little bit of a of earthiness in the back corners of the palate as you move further forward 
um, it, it gets a little bit more herbal and then as you reach the front corners of the palate there's a wee bit more of a kind of brighter floral aromaticity. The German noble hops and things like that and German grown hops tend to be quite bright on the floral side of things but Cascade I think is going to contribute to that as well. Remember the bitter component of your, your hoppy character comes from the early edition hops whereas the flavour and aroma component comes from the later edition hops. You've got a progressive trade-off through the course of your wort boil of course but yeah this beer it's interesting because it does give you a little bit more of that English earthiness which you would get from like Kent Goldings or something like that. Um, but it's using um, what I think is a German hop and uh, an American hop. So yeah, another interesting point about this beer. But round the front curve of the palate, it's a little bit lighter and grassy, uh, which again is something that you would expect. So yeah, the green component for me, it's quite well balanced. Good bit of earthiness, wee bit of floral and grassy character, and I think it just fits together very well. But on that... Um, on that uh, front third of your palate then, on the border region between front third and middle third you get a nice little bit of a, you get a little bit of a kind of bready build up again and a wee bit of a kind of bread crusty um, element coming out of the beer which I can um, I can certainly appreciate, I really like that about this one. But then at the base of that, um, the base of that front third of your palate is a little bit more about, um, it is a little bit more kind of, um, so it leans a little bit more towards that kind of bread crusty, um, that kind of bread crusty toasty brown bready quality, which I um, which I really like. So yeah, sitting on top of that, of course, that's where you get that nice oily bubble where those juicy fruity esters just uh, just roll their way out of the beer. So on the fruity side of things, it's it, it's kind of similar to what you get from the aroma. If you go to the back of that front third of your palate, you will get a little bit of a slightly cakey type vibe to the beer. And then the fruity esters just start to come out on top of that. So, um, yeah, my phone alarm was just going off there. Um, but, yeah, sitting on top of that, um, so see, you get maybe a teeny, teeny little bit of a raisiny note out of this one. Yeah, when you first take it in, there's a teeny little bit of a raisiny note on this one. But as you move just underneath it, um, it starts to get... You know, quite quickly you'll get a little bit of that sort of figgy note out of it. It feels like the that the cascade is forming the backbone of the fruity side of this beer. So you get that nice soft. You get that nice soft sort of. Um, uh, you get that nice kind of soft. Um, just a sort of figgy, black currenty type thing, and you can feel it starts off a little bit figgy on the back. Um, half of that thir front third of your palate but there's also a wee bit of a toasty kind of grainy thing in there and then as you move into the front half of that middle third of your tongue you get a little bit more of a yeah, as you move into the front half of that middle third of your tongue you get a little bit more of a um, how do you say um, a little bit more of just a kind of black currenty type thing and sitting on top of that as you go further into the aftertaste there's a slightly more oily blackberry kind of note out of the beer so yeah yeah I would stick with that definitely but you do get a good bit of you know, dryness and toastiness coming out from the fruity part of the beer which is quite interesting but um, yeah it looks pretty cool I have to say uh, it's, it, it, it's the fruity side of this beer does come across as it's pretty nice and it's quite it's almost has a little bit of a kind of refreshing quality on the front end of the beer too which is kind of interesting but yeah definitely one of the roastier and toastier beers that i've come across from men um, from williams brothers but i think that kind of rounds off the the flavor description for this one so yeah let's just round off the review with the mouthfeel then so overall i would say this beer is kind of bottom end and mid body well no I think it's kind of right. I think it's right in the middle of the spectrum, actually. Um, the carbonation is quite smooth on this one. The beer overall has a wee bit of slickness to it, but compared to the other Williams Brothers ones, like I say, it's got a little bit more of a kind of roasty, toasty type vibe to it. So yeah, be aware of that. If you're used to this brewery, this one is leaning more more of that roasty, toasty side of things. Even when I think about March of the Penguins and the Profanity Stout, those are more kind of smooth beers. Actually, those were always a little bit more kind of. Um, smooth come to think of it but um, yeah even I'm trying to think was it Chocka Blocka if I remember right that's one of the other stouts I've had from these guys that was more of an American style stout so I can't remember exactly how, how better that one was but maybe this beer has a little bit of the roasty and toasty character that we got from, uh, from that um, so yeah definitely one of the more roasty and toasty 
traditional beers, I guess we could say then, from Williams Brothers. In terms of the bitterness and things like that, you're getting a wee bit of bitterness from the hop and a bit from the, the kind of malty side of things. So maybe this beer has about a kind of 40-ish, 50 IBU, something like that. Um, I couldn't tell you just off the bat. Remember, telling IBUs is one of my weaker points when it comes to beer reviewing. But yeah, the malt base, roasty, toasty backbone, a bit of smoothness in between, and then a wee touch of a toasty, sweet brown sugar coming out of it as well. A little bit of the bitterness from the hops, and then you've got a soft, juicy, um, fruity component to it. But I think that sums it up quite nicely. Um, compared to the other miles I've had before, this is one of the roasty and toasty, more grainy examples of the style, but I think it works um, pretty well. So yeah, I think we can... Uh, I think we can leave it at that for this review. So yeah, this one was the Black, an English mild, coming in at 4.5 or 4.6%, not 100% sure, from Williams Brothers Brewing Company in Alloa and Clipmanninshire, the old brewing capital, right in the heart of Scotland, my home county, if you like, and just a mile or two away from where I uh, kind of grew up, if you like. So yeah, let's leave it at that for this one then. Once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are and uh, from this brewery. And in general, if you've got any mild recommendations, that would also be uh, those would also be very welcome. And I can look into getting those the next time I go to the motherland. But I will be back home in Scotland in uh, August, September and October for weddings and activities surrounding weddings. I've got a lot of stuff to do over there. So you will see more Scottish beer reviews um, in a few months' time, so you can keep an eye out for those. Thank you again for watching. Check out my social media. Check out Williams Brothers Brewing Company, and I'll see you guys in the next review. Slange out, skull, and cheers.